This is KSN News at 6. A Wichita cell phone store is struck again just days after a Hutch jewelry store is hit. In both cases, burglars busted through glass and grabbed as much loot as they could. Good evening, everyone. I'm Stephanie Berg. And I'm John Snyder. Thank you for joining us tonight. It's happened now four times in the last couple of months, including twice now at the same store. We're talking about smash and grab burglaries, and now police in Hutchinson and Wichita are working together to see if they're connected. KSN's Justin Kramer has details new at 6. The door of the Z Wireless Verizon dealer is boarded up after burglars busted through the glass overnight grabbing smartphones and tablets. It's the same Z Wireless hit back in November by a similar smash and grab burglary. Just two weeks after that break in, AOK Pawn was burglarized after a car busted through the front door with thieves quickly grabbing everything they could. They uh, smashed and grabbed some of our jewelry. This is the framework for the front of my jewelry store. And in Hutchinson over the weekend, a very similar scene where a car busted through the downtown Main Street storefront around 2 a.m. Saturday and thieves busted through several display cases. You've already seen this tape like 50 times, but what goes through your mind when you see this? Every time it makes me sick. Richard Westfall's been selling jewelry in Hutch since the 70s, the last two decades out of his Main Street store. He locks up all the gold, diamonds, and customer merchandise overnight. These thieves made off with mostly silver and cubic zirconium. The whole front has to be rebuilt. So I'm just, I know the loss of this and the expense of this is going to be way greater than the, the jewelry I lost. Hutchinson police say they've reached out to Wichita detectives to see if this case could be connected to the pawn shop break-in or the two smash and grabs at Z Wireless. In the meantime, Westfall plans to clean up and rebuild his downtown storefront. I'm mean, still in a state of shock that it's not there. Justin Kramer, KSN News. If you have any information about the recent rash of smash and grab burglaries, call either the Wichita or the Hutchinson police. The investigation continues tonight in the case of a gun found at El Dorado High School. It happened Monday after a student reported seeing a weapon on campus. Officials did in fact find a student in possession of a gun. That person was taken into custody. Now the El Dorado Police Department is investigating. No word if any charges will be filed against the student or whoever owned the gun found at the school. Today the principal released this statement, quote, we appreciate support from parents encouraging students to speak up and never compromise their safety or that of others. Their efforts, along with the diligence of our staff and students, contributed to this situation being resolved quickly and without incident. The former Rooks County Sheriff Randy Axelson will spend four years and one month in prison for distributing meth. He was sentenced today after pleading guilty to the felony drug charges. An autopsy report on the body of a Hayes teen that was found on Monday declared that her death was accidental. 18-year-old Ciclale Armendarez went missing from a house party Saturday night. Officials say she died after falling and hitting her head and also from hypothermia. KSN's Michaela Lewis has more from our Central Kansas Bureau. We were shocked and uh, saddened. Uh, to lose one of our students. The death of 18-year-old Ciclali Armendarez rocked Hayes High School and the community. She enjoyed life and uh, she liked to have fun. The Hayes High senior was at a house party in the 1100 block of 250th Avenue Saturday night. There were some bad decisions made. Family members say Armendarez was drinking and wandered away from the residence around 9.30 p.m. She walked almost a mile away from the home in Big Creek. About a six-foot embankment and she fell from that embankment onto some ice and uh, hit her. As she hit the ice, uh, she also hit her head. Investigators say she then walked a little farther but likely collapsed. Her body was found Monday afternoon. The autopsy determined Armendarez died from hypothermia and a head injury from the fall. There was nothing at the scene to indicate any, any type of uh, foul play at all. While law enforcement believe her death was accidental and continue to investigate, Hayes High School officials hope Saclali's peers can learn from this tragedy. Our young people make responsible decisions to respect the law, and we also hope that in our community that residency and hosting issues are observed while lessons are learned, the school took a moment of silence in memory of Saklali and provided counselors for students. We are 
working with the family and the church and and uh, the arrangements to make sure that this week goes by as fast as we can make it and as easy as we can make it to those who are grieving. And the community is supporting the family. The thoughts and prayers go out to the family, the Ormandez family. In Hayes, Makeda Lewis, KSN News. All right, thanks, Michaela. In Goddard, police made a big drug bust when they pulled over a vehicle on Sunday. Officers stopped a 1998 Chevy Tahoe for a traffic violation. They discovered the vehicle was stolen from Albuquerque, New Mexico. Officers say a total of 78 bricks of marijuana were found in the vehicle. Police estimate it has a street value of about $115,000. And what would we pay for a little bit warmer weather? Yeah, we should finally get some tomorrow. Dave Freeman is here with our first forecast. Hi, Dave. Hey, a little January thaw coming our way. We will be able to trade in the winter coats for the spring jackets. Maybe not first thing in the morning, but by the afternoon. That's the way it looks. I think tomorrow morning we'll start off a little bit on the cold side, but we will have fair skies and a warmer wind tomorrow that will help to sweep the cold air out. And no kidding, I think we got a shot at 50 in which it's by the end of tomorrow afternoon. Okay, it's not a tropical heat wave, but it will feel a lot better, and we should be even milder than that before the week is over and then winter returns. I'll return with the details. All right, Dave, Governor Sam Brownback will give the annual State of the State Address in less than a half hour. That's in our news across Kansas tonight. He'll speak to a joint session of the House and Senate. Brownback expected to share his plans for balancing the state budget. He'll also suggest how legislators should respond to last week's court ruling that declared our state's school finance formula unconstitutional. If you'd like to watch the State of the State Address, you can see it live on KSN.com. How much in taxes Kansans will pay on their boats has to be decided by lawmakers this year. The Department of Wildlife, Parks and Tourism recommends that Owners be taxed at 20 percent next year, would then fall to 10 percent in 2015, and boat owners would be exempt from paying taxes starting in 2016. No word yet on when lawmakers will decide that issue. Wichita City Council is now full as a former member is back on the bench. Paul Gray is again representing the 4th District. He takes the seat vacated by Michael O'Donnell. Members voted 4-2 to two for him to be on the council. He served District 4 from 2003 to 2011 and left because of term limits. The council also gave the green light to a star bond application for the proposed sports complex at K96 in Greenwich. While another similar project in Bel Air has already applied for star bonds as well, the developers say the two complexes are being built to attract different crowds. Today's vote was six to nothing. More and more new businesses opened their doors last year in Kansas. That's the word from the Secretary of State's office today. The annual business formation report shows 13,000. 646 jobs were created in the year 2011. That jumped to 15,008 this year. That's a record for the state of Kansas. It looks like Slugger, the mascot for the Kansas City Royals, will be back in court. In September of 2009, a fan, John Coomer, claims a hot dog thrown by Slugger hit him in the eye, causing serious damage. His original lawsuit asked for more than $25,000. A Jackson County jury ruled that fans accept the risk of being hit by flying objects when they go to a baseball game. But a court of appeals overturned that decision. No word when the mascot will be in court. It's still to come here at 6 o'clock. Hundreds of parents and teachers are at Century 2 tonight so they can scout out the schools they may want to attend. Usually things are torn down to make parking lots, but now it's the other way around. We'll tell you what will be built at this site on the WSU campus. You're watching KSN News at 6. News and weather when you want at KSN.com. Finding the right school for your child can be tough. And that's why every year, USD 259, the Wichita Schools, hosts the Choices Fair. It's going on right now called the One Stop Shop for Education. It gives students and parents a chance to find out more about the different programs offered. They can compare what schools offer and what would be the best fit for their kids. One new feature this year is transition classes for students moving on to the next grade. We know that sometimes going from middle school to high school or from elementary to middle school can be kind of hard for both the students and the parents. So these are sessions that the, the parents can go to, ask questions, learn how they can support their kids if their child goes on to a bigger school. The Choices Fair runs until 8 tonight at the Exhibition Hall, Century 2.
Wichita State University is closer to having new campus housing. The developer of the 700-bed on-campus building has been selected. In addition, the main contractor has been picked, as well as the architecture firm. But WSU officials say the final contracts still have not been signed. The new campus housing was a goal set by President John Bardo soon after he came to WSU. Dave is back in just a moment. More on that warm-up we've been waiting all week for. Stay tuned. You'll have the weather after this. Now, in high definition, your KSN Pinpoint Weather Forecast. And welcome back to the Pinpoint Weather Center, where we are looking forward to some really nice, mild weather over the next several days. It looks like a nice January thaw, although, of course, it's not going to last forever because we have a lot more winter to go. Milder beginning tomorrow and lasting through Saturday. Now Sunday we're going to start to turn chilly again and then very cold air coming straight from northern Canada coming back our way early next week. So that's the time scale. You've got several good days coming up. Now tonight, of course, once the sun goes down, we are going to get cold again. Let's check our progress with our Pinpoint Weather Network. Southwest side of the metro area, Hayesville Middle School at 30 right now. No wind, so no difference in terms of the feels like temperature. And we're actually seeing the same results in southwest Kansas at Ingalls School. 26 degrees, but the wind has died off, so no difference there. Let's double check it around the state, bringing you up to the current time as we see the temperatures already starting to fall in western Kansas, 23 at McCook, 25 at Goodland, and also at Dodge City. Back into the central part of the state, not quite as bad. Wichita officially this hour, 32. Let's go ahead and check and see if there is any difference with the wind, and we do see a little bit northwest. McCook feels like 13. Goodland feels like 19 feels like 18 at Dodge City, but less wind, less of an effect in central Kansas. No difference for Wichita, for example. Our satellite picture is heartbreaking for us. It's beautiful, dry. Off to the east, we've got really incredible rainfall and a significant ice storm that's going on through the southern Mississippi Valley on up into the Ohio Valley. But again, back here where we are, we're in between systems. We're dry as a bone, but of course it is beautiful. Overnight tonight, I do think we will get a little bit on the cold side, but not as cold as we have been for the last couple of days. And Oh, that looks promising, but unfortunately the light snow and flurries are expected to stay well to our north overnight. We start tomorrow morning cold and dry again. Through the day, though, we get a little bit of help. We'll go sunny to partly cloudy with the sunshine returning west to east, and by the time we finish up tomorrow afternoon, much, much milder. A chance to toss the winter coat in the back seat of the car on the drive home. Let's take a look at it. Here's your KSN custom forecast. Wichita for tonight. I think Arc City actually has a shot at staying in the 20s, but we should do teens. We'll say 18 for Wichita. Tomorrow, everybody has a, a chance to get up into the 50s. I think it should be a really nice afternoon. Northwest winds picking up at 8 to 18 miles an hour, but that's actually going to be kind of a warm wind tomorrow. North central Kansas, also here a little bit of a mixed bag. 20 at Hayes. We should be able to stay upper teens in the rest of this area. And then tomorrow, I think you got a shot at the 50s as well. Across the board, should be a really fine afternoon. Western Kansas tonight will be down into the teens and 20s. 20 even, Hill City, Dodge City, and Liberal. Then tomorrow, almost everybody, I think, has a shot at the 50s. It'll be close at Colby. I'll say 49 there. Notice a little bit more wind here out of the northwest, but again, tomorrow, that's going to be kind of a mild wind, helping to sweep the cold air away and keep it away for a few days in your Wichita Weekly. <laughs> It's going to be really nice for the first part of the weekend. Uh, really, uh, I think we've got a very good shot at getting well up into the 50s on Friday. Still looks good Saturday, chillier Sunday, and then we really get back into the freezer early next week. North central Kansas, also several days in the 50s, but it will turn colder on Sunday, and then the real deal kicks back in next Monday and Tuesday. In the southwest, uh, a number of days here where you'll be in the upper 40s to low 50s, it will turn chillier on Sunday, and then you're back in the freezer Monday and Tuesday. 
Tuesday. In the Northwest, okay, you're going to be close. 49 Wednesday, Thursday, but I'll give you a 51 in Colby on Friday. Still nice Saturday before you also head back into the freezer. 28 Monday, 25 Tuesday, and the real heartbreaking part about that whole thing is going to be dry. I don't see Again. any significant moisture. But boy, 50s look wonderful. Back in October, 50s would have looked cold, but now they're looking great. Everybody's going to be smiling. Yeah. Coming up later on a newscast, we'll give you some new meaning to the phrase "hair of the dog." The little puppy knows about that firsthand. And coming up in sports, Wichita State coach Greg Marshall talks about the return of Carl Hall and the latest on KU star Ben McLemore's injury from last night. Plus, what did Brent Musburger say this time? We're back. Hello, everybody. A great win for the Kansas Jayhawks last night over the Baylor Bears, but hearts were dropping near the end of that game. That's because leading scorer Jayhawks star Ben McLemore went down with an ankle injury. And while he appeared in a lot of pain, McLemore was able to walk off the court. And Coach Bill Self said afterwards he doesn't think the injury was too serious. He's fine. I mean, he's not fine. He twisted his ankle. And if we, uh, uh, pract if we were going to practice tomorrow, I wouldn't let him practice. But I don't know how severe it is. It's probably going to be something that, you know, depending on swelling or whatnot. But I, 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 I can't make a prediction on how many days he's going to be out. But we're so certainly hopeful that it's not more than, you know, two or three. My heart dropped because uh, to see somebody like that who work hard, you know, you just don't want to see nothing bad happen to him. KU winning last night's game, 61-44. Baylor's 44 points, the fewest the KU team has allowed in a conference game since 2007. The Jayhawks now 3-0 and in the Big 12. An honor today for Coach Bill Self. He will be inducted into the Oklahoma Sports Hall of Fame. Besides his coaching accomplishments, Self, a native of Edmond, was the 1981 Oklahoma High School Player of the Year before going on to play four seasons at Oklahoma State. Self will be inducted August 5th at the National Cowboy and Western Heritage Museum in Oklahoma City. Wichita State basketball coach Greg Marshall was talking to a group of boosters today, and they told him they really enjoyed watching him plug in different players to cover for all the injuries lately. Well, it hasn't been that much fun for the coach. That's why he is very glad to see Carl Hall coming back in the lineup. A Wichita State senior has missed seven games of broken thumb. He will be in the lineup tomorrow night at home against Illinois State. And while the coach isn't sure how many minutes the big guy is going to play, it's just good to have his presence on the court. Yeah, we enjoyed the winning, but it was it was work. It was a struggle. Every 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 possession, every game, every half was uh, uh, was difficult when you're when you're taking three of your top five players off the court. Uh, we'll have one of those five back and. Uh, to, to what degree we'll have him back, I'm not sure, but we're going to have him back. And just like we said, his presence is going to be beneficial. I think it, I think we had a little extra bounce in our step in practice yesterday with, with, with Carl being out there. And again, the Shockers at home tomorrow against Illinois State. The Redbirds picked to finish second in the Missouri Valley off to an 0-5 start in the conference. All right, back to KU's game last night where Brent Musburger was once again raising a few eyebrows. Remember, ESPN, the network, apologized for Musburger after it said he went too far in complimenting this young lady, the girlfriend of Alabama quarterback A.J. McCarron, during the national championship game. Well, last night at Allen Fieldhouse, Musburger's first game back on the air, and he signed off with this little comment we think about his colleague, Holly Rowe. For Fred Priscilla. And Holly Rowe, who was really smoking tonight, I want to say so long from Lawrence. Yeah, a lot of people talking about this today. ESPN claiming Musburger said it is smoking and not Holly Rowe. You know, I, I think he did say it. I think he's just, how I, I heard it. I think he's having a little fun with ESPN because I, yeah. I don't think he was too happy they made they apologized for him. I agree him. with you. I wonder how Holly feels about smoking. <laughs> we'll find out. Yeah. Well, if you drink a lot of vodka, you're sure to get a hangover, right? But that actually saved a puppy's life. We'll tell you how next. Animals in an antifreeze don't mix. In fact, it can be deadly. So one veterinarian came up with a wild way to cure a puppy on the verge of dying. Cute little Cleo in American Staffordshire was near death after licking up antifreeze in her owner's garage in Melbourne, Australia. The dog's vet knew the chemicals could kill her, so he hooked the pup up to a vodka drip. The doctor says the alcohol sucks the toxins from the antifreeze out of the dog's system. It took an entire bottle and a half of the hooch, but it worked. 
Cleo's owner says the dog was pretty hungover, but is now doing great. I'll remember that next time I get drink antifreeze. <laughs> Maybe drink a little vodka just as prevention. There you go. We may need something to keep us warm tonight. I would suggest hot chocolate <laughs> tonight and then iced tea tomorrow. We've got a real nice warm up for January coming over the next several days and then really cold air returning early next week. But no rain, no snow, no, no moisture. Nothing. That's our time here at 6. We'll see you back at 10. Have a good night. Thank you.